I am in gaming heaven. Welcome to the center of the computing history where we have everything right from gaming from arcades to ancient computers, consoles, you name it. Today in this video, I'm going to show you around what we can find in this amazing place. You don't like museums? You haven't found the right one. Come here to Cambridge in the center of computing history. Let me be your tour guide. Come on, let's go. My dear friend A. Fredro, you can follow him on Twitch and he's on Twitter. He's going to give an awesome little rundown of each of these computers here. And he is awesome. Alright, well, it's all yours. There we go. Um, so we'll start off the Acorn Atom. Uh, so um, one of Acorn's first home computers. Um, £120 when it came out. Uh, yeah, built in the 1980s. 2K of RAM and 8K ROM. Um, very, very early machine. Um, but subsequently gave birth to the BBC Micro and the Acorn Electron later. The Atari 800 was not so popular in the UK. Uh, it's part of the Atari 8-bit range of computers and consoles. Uh, it has the ability to load 8-bit uh, cartridges. So these are the uh, some of the 8-bit um, games, uh, arcade games that they had. Again, wasn't very popular in the UK, sold much better in the States. So the ZX81 here is uh, Sinc arguably Sinclair's first very successful home computer. Um, 1K of RAM, you could expand it to 16K with an expansion pack. The famously flat keyboard, which is just a membrane, uh, very flaky. Um, the expansion pack used to fall off the back and cause the machine to crash at a very, very bad time. Uh, it was only black and white and didn't have any sound either. So, but it was a very early one. BBC B Micro, 60, plus 30, sorry, 32K of RAM, and uh, made popular by running in conjunction with the BBC Project to educate the masses in the home computer. Acorn won the deal over Sinclair, which is a famous story. Um, very popular in schools as an educational piece of equipment. TI-99 4A is one of, is again an excellent American machine. In Texas Instruments, I call it the DeLorean because it's got this lovely stainless steel finish um, and it's one of the first 16-bit uh, machines available for the, uh, for the home place. Also, it could be expanded horizontally uh, with many expansions such as speed synthesizer, uh, floppy drive, parallel printer until it resembled a great big silver chocolate bar. It's a Sword M5, I don't know a lot about that one, it's a very unusual uh, almost rubber keys machine. Um, uh, Commodore 64, again, vastly popular, 64K. Main rival of the ZX Spectrum 48K, uh, back in school days. Better sound, because it had SID chip. The SID chip was a self-contained synthesizer, which could be programmed to do all kinds of wonderful music, which pretty much won it over from the Spectrum. The very blocky palette. And then we've got the ZX 48K, uh, which was Sinclair's most successful home computer. Uh, 48K RAM, initially it was 16K. Uh, full colors, full colors uh, sound, a massive variety of games, and the infamous color clash, because the pixels used to clash the colors. Um, but it's kind of a, a nostalgic, nice trait. Dragon 32 is a Welsh-made 8-bit machine, um, which has arguably, I would consider, very poor graphics and um, mainly was in green. Everything was in green. It's the, the famous green system. Sell reasonably well. I made quite a few of them. I remember friends at school. They were, they were quite good. And then Tacton Einstein was a, a actually mostly a development machine um, used for writing games, particularly for Spectrum uh, and others. Um, fairly obscure, but did have some games. Uh, it's got twin three-inch drives on the uh, Amstrad-style discs. And then this one is the CPC 464. Uh, so again, 
This was kind of a rival at the time of the Spectrum, um, and very similar to the Plus 2 that eventually Amstrad made under the Sinclair brand anyway. Um, it's huge. It's one of the biggest home computers at the time. Uh, you could injure yourself if you dropped it on you. <laughs> um, uh, it's got an amazing section of games. There's many fans behind this one. Uh, the only slight downside, particularly in collecting terms, is that you, you generally have to have the monitor, which actually powers the computer and the monitor itself, unless you have a variety of different adapters. Uh, more interestingly, here is the Plus 4. So this came out uh, around 64 times. The idea of this was it was a business machine. It was called the Plus 4 because it had four inbuilt applications um, in its ROM. Uh, it uses something called the TED chip, which is a combined graphics and sound chip. Um, it was kind of the disappointment if your parents got your Christmas wrong and you ended up one of these and not a 64. But still, it has a very good selection of games, but not quite the sound or graphics capability. 64. And then finally, we've got the MSX, which was Japan's way to standardise 8 bit machines. They came out with the arrangement of the cursor keys like this. It's called the MSX because it uses Microsoft Extended Basic, um, hence its name. 64K for the for the Mark 1s and the Mark 2s went up to 128. A variety of companies made the same machine, Sony, Toshiba, um, quite a few Japanese models um, exist. It's, it's so many different varieties of this, but they all share the giant cursor keys and the cartridge loading. It's interesting that Konomi cut its teeth for some of its games such as Metal Gear Solid started off on this platform. It's an amazing game! My boy! Let me guess, office jump? Is no, it? it's a trick of fun. Oh, it's a trick It's really So the standard CD32 controller was pretty awful. The, yeah. The main thing that always happened with these, the D-pad got loose and that starts to rotate. You might wish it could loose again. It is actually loose, it's not yeah. working properly. Yeah. Oh yeah! This could be fun! Ready? Yep. Three, two, one. Gives us two, two chums and one pump. <laughs> Oh, I just snuck <laughs> out. All these snaps done by 5 o'clock. Yes, oh, yes, yes, yes. I'll pay for slackers. We've been working 10 hours a day. Can we have a coffee break? You get a coffee break once the work is done. Can we get a new manager? Beep beep. B plus PP, what, what are you doing? We're looking at porn. <laughs> Hold your turn. Yep. That's it. Come on, G. I think he's broken. Oh no, man. I mean, too many people have done this. Yes, I think you're right. Ah, they don't want people doing this. Mm. 20. Sometimes just 20, 10 works. But I doubt it's going to do that. Uh, 
I think it's just going to do it once. Is, is uh, the U even working? No, the U's not even working, okay? <laughs> I can't make it run. He wants our money back. Hold on. IT? <laughs> uh, my Commodore PEX 2001 series is broken. Have I tried to turn it on and off again? Yes, I have. What's the problem? Well, the U and G button don't work. What do you mean I should type C U P? Are you trolling me? Oh, wow. I don't want to see you, P. You're lewd. Trees, have you played the television yet? So I've got a couple of these. These are great. Horrible pads. They get all that looks like Gyromancer. Yeah. So it was. That's a horrible pad. Come on, how'd you jump? How'd you jump? Good egg design. It's horrible. It's a horrible pad. It's one of the. People always slate the Jaguar controller as being ridiculous, but this is the most ridiculous. Oh, there you go. The Jaguar controller doesn't make sense. Yeah, yeah, you put this. Uh, this, I mean, this was actually, this was a 16-bit machine, believe it or not. What? Yeah. So it was... Nice graphics. This was, this was Mattel's, this was designed to kill the Atari 2600. Yeah. They were after blood with this, and they, in the advertising, they slated them, they were after it. But they didn't get it, because it just was a bit weird. But it did last for a really long time. They were making them up to, I think, late 90s, early 2000s. Yes.